the fastest that man has ever traveled was an aircraft called NASA's X-15 and went to a speed of Mach 6.7, which is 7,274.2 kilometers an hour. It reached that speed in 80 seconds of thrust. However, the railgun it goes to a speed of Mach 7, which is 8,575.2 kilometers an hour and can reach that speed within a fraction of a second. Now, what is a railgun? Well, basically, it is a large electric current and needs three parts for it to work. It needs a power supply, which is a source of electric current. It needs two parallel rails, which are made out of conductive copper and can be a length of 30 feet. And the third is that it needs an armature, which bridges the gap between the two rails and it is a conductive metal or a conductive sabot. And it houses the projectile, as you can see in red. Now, how does a railgun work? Well, you have the generator, which gives power to the power supply, which then creates an electric current, which runs from the positive terminal down the positive rail, which goes across the armature, up the negative rail, and back to the negative power supply. This creates the electrical current. After the projectile has been released from the armature and passed the two rails, it then breaks the circuit, which ends the flow of current. Now, the reason why the railgun might be found or seen in the near future is because the military has plans to replace their missiles, which are very expensive and houses gunpowder, and to replace it with the railgun, which is less expensive and does not need gunpowder. Here's how an electromagnetic railgun works. The current from your power supply comes into your positive rail, travels down to your armature, where it then crosses over to your negative rail, and current flows out. While current is inside these rails, it produces a magnetic field. These magnetic fields exert a force upon our armature or projectile. These forces can be calculated by this equation up here. F equals I times L times B. In this equation, I is the magnitude of our current, L is the length of our railgun, and B is the magnitude of our magnetic fields. Um, these forces that are being exerted were noticed by a Dutch physicist named Hendri Hendrik Lorenz. Um, Hendrik Lorenz also noted, uh, developed a rule how to identify these forces. Here we have a small diagram. Um, we're going to use our right hand to identify where these forces go. Pink is current, which we identify as our thumb. Our thumb goes in the direction of current. Purple, our magnetic fields, will be identified by our fingers. Our fingers coil in the direction of a magnetic field. So in this case, currents flowing right, our fingers come out from the board. Here we have our force, which is identified as coming out. This will be uh, indicated by our palm, the direction of our palm. So if current is going right, our magnetic field is going right as well, or is coming out from the board, so is our force. Here we have a top-down view of, how, of a railgun. We see that current comes in on the positive rail, across our projectile, and out this side. To identify where these forces are taking place, we're going to use our right-hand rule. Current coming in on the right, therefore our fingers are coiling out from the, out from the board, and our palm is now facing in on the projectile. So we have forces being exerted in towards the middle. Across the bottom, we've got our current going out. So we use our thumb, pointed in the direction of current, going out. Our fingers coil in the direction of the magnetic field. And our palm is now facing up, which is again inward. So we have two forces sandwiching our projectile. They both want to get it out of the way. It can no longer go backwards because it's at the end of our gun. Where else can it go? Down the barrel. 
As it's moving along, our SABO, or plasma, depending on what is used, completes the circuit and projects the, or shoots the projectile out of the gun. Once it is no longer in the gun, um, current stops flowing through because our circuit is no longer complete. Two types of uh, conductive materials can be used. We have a SABO, which is just a conductive metal that is wrapped around our projectile to ensure that it will smoothly exit the weapon. And we have plasma. Plasma is created by wrapping our projectile in a, a conductive foil. This foil is turned into plasma when the current starts flowing through it. This happens at such a high intensity that our, our metal melts and creates plasma, which is highly conductive. This will also launch our projectile out of the gun. So the future of railguns and problems that are stopping the advance in this technology. The world hopes to use uh, railguns as a mean of weapons. Um, currently, with gunpowder propellants, Navy weapons are able to shoot up to 12 kilometers. This is still an exceptional range, but anything beyond that, you require rockets. Currently, cruise missiles can travel up to about 250 kilometers. Um, Railguns, on the other hand, also have that distance. They will be able to fire shells up to 250 kilometers. This is an exceptional feat, especially since the current systems, to fire one Tomahawk cruise missile, it costs $1.5 million. To fire one railgun uh, salvo, it costs $25,000. This means that you can shoot six times the munitions as the current system. Um, the world also hopes to use this technology as a means of space exploration. In the next couple of years, the Earth is planning on colonizing Mars. In doing so, gravity is very different. Here on Earth, we have 9.8 meters per second of gravity, but on Mars, they have about a third, at 3.7 meters per second. Meaning that you would be able, it would be far easier to launch things into orbit or into the atmosphere. So the hope here is that we'll be able to launch resources back into space using a fraction of the fuel. Currently, to get things into space from our end, so on Earth, it costs about $450 million to launch one rocket. The hope here is to use a railgun and another technology called a scramjet. Basically, a scramjet is an engine that runs off of oxygen that it collects as it's flying. So here, they want to use a scramjet and a railgun in cooperation to be able to launch rockets into the air. The railgun would fire, sending, sending the rockets across the ground up to speeds of Mach 7, where then the, the scramjet takes over. It would launch into the air and then take off and go extra fast to get the rocket into the atmosphere. The problems that are stopping this technology from being advanced is that power supplies are very difficult. Power supplies of that magnitude are very difficult to obtain. Not only that, but the forces that are being exerted upon the railgun often cause it to deform or even explode. Um, this is quite an issue if you can only fire a railgun once. Um, another issue is when the, the sabos are traveling through the railgun, they often generate a lot of heat. So if there was a way that we could reduce the amount of friction inside a railgun, um, the metals might not be warping quite the same 